Uh, the chairwoman of the Federal Election Commission put out a tweet last night, quote, I would not have thought that I needed to say this, followed by a statement reading in part, let me make something 100 percent clear to the American public and anyone running for public office. It is illegal for any person to solicit, accept, or receive anything of value from a foreign national in connection with a U.S. election. This is not a novel concept. Our founding fathers sounded the alarm about foreign interference, intrigue, and influence. They knew that when foreign governments seek to influence American politics, it is always to advance their own interests and not Americas and FEC Chairwoman Ellen Weintraub joins us now. Thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. Thank you very much for releasing that statement and putting out that tweet. Um, can you give us a sense of what compelled you to feel like you needed to do that? Well, it is part of my job as head of the Federal Election Commission to make sure that all candidates and the American public are well informed on the laws that govern our campaign finance system mm -hmm. that um, tells people who is trying to influence the folks who are running for office and uh, seeking to hold high public office in this country. There seemed to be a little bit of confusion on this point, which confused me because it's actually a matter of black letter law. Mm -hmm. It's pretty straightforward. Anyone in the United States is not allowed to accept anything of value from a foreign national, particularly a foreign government, right. in connection with an election, federal, state, local, any election in the United States. So the president's statement, um, it could have been to foreign governments. Did that concern you at all? I don't want to comment about any individual candidates' comments or their conduct. I'm just interested in making sure that everybody understands the law. I've been gravely concerned about the efforts of foreign governments to try and intervene mm -hmm. in our election, to try and undermine our democracy. I think that's something that a lot of people in America are very concerned about. And I think everyone in government should be speaking with one voice on this. This is not a partisan issue. This is not a question of foreign governments taking sides uh, on behalf of the uh, policy platforms of one go of party or another, one candidate or another. Another. The foreign governments who we have seen very bad actions from in the past are not likely to cease their efforts going forward unless the entire American government speaks with one voice and says this is intolerable, this is unacceptable, we're not going to put up with it. Chairwoman Weintraub, it's Willie Geitz. We appreciate you coming on and explaining your memo uh, from yesterday. Um, I want to ask you about the idea of anything of value from a foreign national because some have viewed that as something monetary or some business deal. What about information? If someone reached out to a candidate and said, for example, I have dirt on one of your opponents, would that be considered something of value? Well, we would have to consider that if it were to come before us in an enforcement action. We would have to evaluate what the value of the information was. But, you know, um, I'll put this to, to Joe. You've got a former candidate right uh, here on the set with us. Would he have considered uh, information to be of value to him in his campaign? I don't believe he's here at the moment. But oh, I think we missed he, him. Sorry. I, I think he would he would say that and <laughs> and also say he would call the FBI right away if that had happened. Um, we heard on the floor of the Senate yesterday from one Republican, Marsha Blackburn, kind of listing through and saying why she wouldn't support Mark Warner's bill on this. Some of the examples she cited as problems would be um, campaign volunteers who are foreign nationals. Would that be considered illegal in your eyes? Uh, there's an exception for volunteer service. Uh, and there have been some cases at the FEC that involve foreign nationals who volunteered on campaigns. What about uh, campaign receiving social media responses or interactions? Would that be illegal? Um, I, I would have to look at the facts on that one. I'm not sure uh, exactly what the parameters of, the, of a social media response would be. And do you believe um, that there should be a law, something that strengthens and codifies what you wrote about uh, in your memo yesterday that says, there has to be a law against participating and, and working with a foreign government during a campaign. That is already illegal, but there are a number of bills uh, that have been introduced in Congress that would strengthen our defenses against foreign intervention. And uh, I seriously uh, wish that all members of Congress would mm -hmm. adopt some of those provisions because I really think that we, we do need to strengthen our protections going into 2020. I should say that law is on the books, but you believe it needs to be strengthened. I, I think there are other laws that could help to shore it up. 
Uh, Chairwoman, let me ask you two quick questions. One, just to, a, a second point uh, to one of the additions of what Willie was just talking about, which is uh, the, the question of whether, and this is something that Senator Blackburn mentioned and the president mentioned, related to whether a, a candidate hearing the views of a foreign national or a foreign, uh, a foreign official, whether that would be considered something of value. A candidate presumably could have a conversation with a foreign national uh, to hear their views about a range of issues. That would be considered okay, but very different from the kind of thing that is prohibited. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Um, and the second thing I wanted to ask, you mentioned that you said there was, you had great concern about foreign nationals trying to influence our elections. Obviously, I, I think that part of the reason, well, I'll ask you, is the reason why you are concerned about it because of the fact that there was an effort to influence an American election in 2016? And are you, like the FBI director, p particularly concerned about the efforts of that same country, which is Russia, to try to do in 2020 again what they did try to do according to the intelligence services in 2016? Absolutely. And they're working on other things, I'm sure. What happened in 2016 is we shouldn't expect the same playbook to be uh, uh, used as is in 2020. I'm also worried about other countries, because if other countries saw that it seemed to have an effect or not, but it, it seemed to go uh, to go on without any severe repercussions in 2016, then I think we right. could well see interventions from other countries um, all over the map. And again, this is not an attempt for someone outside the country to exercise mm -hmm. um, some right to voice their opinion. They're trying to undermine our democracy. They're trying to sow chaos. They're trying to make Americans um, feel disenchanted with our democracy and not bother to go to the polls polling stations in some cases. This is really dangerous stuff. Yes, it is. Your clarity is so helpful. And Joe, um, I won't have Ellen comment on this, but before you take it to her, uh, you know, she brings up such a good point about the other foreign governments being told we're open for business. And, and you've got to look at the context. I mean, we know Donald Trump and what he said in itself was a threat to our national security, but it came at a time when his poll numbers were looking bad. It's hard not to put two and two together. Uh, well, yeah, and I, I, I want to go to the commissioner and just say that um, the question we've been asking all this morning uh, is uh, when would Mitch McConnell uh, take this sort of help? Would any member of Congress take this sort of help? And I'm so glad you're here this morning because what I've been saying is that, you know, I served, you know, it's four, they're elected four times and probably served with 600, 700 members of Congress over that time period. I never heard this happening one time. A uh, foreign national coming in saying, hey, let me give you dirt, and that not being reported. I'm sure Mitch McConnell and everybody else would report it immediately. I'm just curious, so am I naive? Do you hear of this happening a good bit? Because I can tell you, the first thing we would say is we've got to call the FBI. The second thing is my chief of staff, any one of my chief of staffs would have said, hey, OPPO research uh, is not only possibly illegal, it's an in-kind contribution. You want to put that on your FEC report? Well, as I said, I'm not going to uh, comment on any particular candidate, and, and I'm not in a congressional right. office, so nobody's, certainly nobody's approaching me with that kind of information. But I would hope that every single member of Congress, if they were to get an approach from uh, a foreign government, that they would immediately report that to the FBI. But Donald Trump says everybody did it. I don't want you to comment on Donald Trump. I just want to f find out whether I have been naive over the past 25 years in my dealings with members of Congress. Does this happen all the time? Have, do you hear of reports? Do you have many cases that have come across your desk or that you've read of or any precedents where you have foreign nationals actively trying to influence campaigns this way? I can't comment on anything that could be on our enforcement docket, but the uh, big picture answer is no, I don't think this is rampant, and um, thank, thank goodness it's not. Yeah. All right. Susan, uh, Mika. Oh, uh, Susan Del Persio. Uh, Chairwoman, just to clarify things, is it also illegal for PACs or federal uh, parties or state political parties to accept this kind of uh, in-kind contribution, if you will? From a, from a from foreign, foreign national, national or a foreign government? Foreign, Absolutely, yes. yes. Okay, so that Absolutely. should also be very clear in case the president or others are listening. You can't have your super PAC use it either. 
No, absolutely not. Okay, good. Thank you. Listen, we're in a whole new place that we have to actually explain these things and explain what they might be concerning to our country's safety. FEC Chairman Ellen Weintraub, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. Thank you for having me. Coming up on Morning Joe, we now know which 20 Democrats will be hitting the stage in Miami this month for the first debate of the primary season. Morning Joe will be there live for special coverage June 26th and 27th. And up next, the chairman of the DNC, Tom Perez, joins the conversation. Morning Joe is back in a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.